That's what Jose thinks. Uh, Peter Green's tweeted me already to say the manager's word is final. If she doesn't like it, leave. Joining us to talk about it further, Central London sports journalist Natasha Henry. And here with me in the studio is the broadcaster Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, let's uh, turn to you, Natasha, first of all, if I may. Uh, you think he's in the wrong? I do think he's in the wrong, 100%. Why? Um, I think I'm, I'm a big believer if you have a problem with your staff, then you deal with it in-house, first and foremost. And secondly, he needs to understand their job as much as they need to understand his. If the medical team hadn't gone onto the field, they would have been breaking rules of the British Medical Council. So would he rather that they didn't do their job and just abided to what he feels is right? Or would he prefer that they did their job and made sure that the health and safety of the player was the most important thing? Milo? I don't know. I have to take a slightly different view on this. I kind of get the impression behind a lot of the reporting here that people are trying to make this into slightly a gender issue. I'm not sure why we're really even hearing about it. I mean, thank God for the drama in football, because if it weren't for the drama in football, I mean, it would be so unutterably boring. Football is a game in any case because of women and homosexuals. It's just so, so dull. It's the reason women's football is tolerable, because it's so close already to this incredibly boring thing. I don't get why we're talking about this at all, except for the fact that every time a woman seems to get fired or sidelined, it seems to become a gender issue. It's almost like um, men are sort of anxious to white knight her and I wonder about the message this sends out that women sometimes somehow need this help he's the manager you know the game of football revolves around the off-pitch drama it is entirely up to him whether he wants to fire or uh, you know or hire people they are known for being mercurial and difficult and it seems to me that you know we're only hearing about this because uh, this woman happens to have a pair of breasts Natasha um, personally, I'm, I'm not buying into the he's sexist. That's not at all my issue with it. My issue with it is that she's a medically trained doctor, very, very well trained, very um, successful and experienced. And I just feel whether she was a man or a woman, that his attitude towards a lot of people is disrespectful. I just don't see how demoting someone is supporting them as a member of your staff. Now, if it came down to it, choices, Jose probably changed for, trained for three years to do his job. She trained for eight. So I think all medical staff, regardless of who they work for, deserve a bit more respect. Martin uh, Turner's tweeted uh, to uh, Milo to say that Eden Hazard, who's the player on, on the floor, he surely should have known the rules as well. Why blame the doctor? Um, well, I don't think anyone's blaming the doctor. All they're suggesting is that it is the manager, the you know, the coach's uh, prerogative to do exactly as he pleases. And my question at the beginning was simply why we're hearing about this. Why is this news? Why is this interesting? Why are so many people talking about it? There's a sort of underlying red thread here, which I'm a bit suspicious about. And you know, at training periods, whether she was training for eight years to be a doctor seems to me to be entirely irrelevant. Um, you know, the fact is he's made a decision about his team, uh, and you know, she's been very gracious about it. It's not her that is driving this extraordinary and, and mystifying. Uh, controversy. Um, she was very gracious on Facebook. She said, uh, you know, thanks for all the support, but didn't go into any of the, the details, didn't go into, um, you know, whether or not she felt that the decision was fair. Uh, she simply, um, she, she, she was nice about it. It seems to be the media that are making this a story, and I, I still can't work out why. And I, I'm getting a sense that readers from comment sections online, from Twitter, are also wondering, why is this a story? Why every time a woman, um, you know, is, is demoted or has a tough time at work, do we make it an issue, of, uh, you know, make it into an issue, even if we don't use the S word? Um, it's very peculiar um, and you know fr frankly it's got nothing to do with how long she trained, how long he trained. It's got nothing to do with, you know, the, the uh, you know, any, any particular commentator's assessment of whether she was right or not to head onto the pitch. He made a decision. It is essential, you know, for the functioning of the football industry as we know it that these mercurial, uh, you know, dictators are allowed to behave like this. It's what people read the sports pages for, after all. Um, you know, I just don't understand why we're talking about it. Uh, well, as far as you're concerned, Natasha, I mean, surely it is up to the manager. He decides who sits uh, pitch side and who doesn't. And on occasion, as we, as we know in the past, when he's overstepped the mark, he's been forced to move away from the side of the pitch. So it's up to the manager to choose. Oh, I have no problem with him deciding who he wants on the bench next to him. It's the way he deals with things. This is a story to, to um, respond to Milo. It's a story because it's Jose Mourinho. And one thing Jose's known for is drawing attention away from his team when they've actually been quite disappointing. We've seen him blame referees, the weather, lines people, even ball boys have been at fault when Chelsea haven't performed as they should do. And that's why it's a story. It's a story because rather than talking about the inability of his team, 
the current champions to beat Swansea at home, he decided to explain to us why he was shouting at his medical staff. He but could have said that. This is what people watch that's... football for, isn't it? I mean, this is why people watch football. It's for all the hissy fits and drama. You know, this is a sport for people who love a bit of drama. It's a sport for people who, <laughs> you know, aren't necessarily particularly interested in athleticism. I mean, it's a sport for people who perhaps aren't aren't into really properly manly games like hockey, ice hockey, or or American okay, football. Okay, let me take you, you know, to the Emirates it's a, it's and let's a, see you know, if people it's a, it's pay more attention. It's a sport for attention. people who live for off-pitch drama. And yeah, what, that's what, what they live for. What Mourinho. It, what Mourinho does is no different to what the players do on the pitch when they dive, you know, and it's very difficult. I mean, I kind of feel for her in a sense. It's very difficult for a doctor to know whether or not, um, you know, a player is genuinely in pain because, you know, these these men are such theatrical divas, um, you know, and, and I think he's well within his rights to make a judgment about whether or not it was a good decision of hers. And I no, think the referee called her onto the pitch. She was following the rules that she normally follows follows, a which is the referee's always called her right onto the pitch, everything. therefore she doesn't the know if the player's broken his wrong. leg or not. The referees are never wrong about anything. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying she did her job. That's what she did. In the same way that your boss it, calls you and says, can you actually do me a thousand words today? In the, the referee called her the, onto the pitch, so she did her job. In the judgment of her boss, she, you know, she... Has He's got, not her boss. Roman Marie Abramovich is her boss. Okay. Jose Mourinho is the manager of the team, not the manager of the staff around him. Well, presumably, if he weren't her boss, he wouldn't be able to sideline her in the way that he has. Oh, and wait. He he, the order may, he may have used the words, but it's not his order. It's down to people above Jose to make the decisions, just as it is whether he can spend money, which he hasn't, which is why he's thrown his toys out of the pram this do you week. Think, um, do You're going to struggle now because we're talking about football and you know nothing about it, do you, Mike? Nonsense. Mano? That's ridiculous. I told you it's a game for women and homosexuals, so obviously I've been to lots of matches. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Who's your team then? Uh, well, I'm there so, you I go. Think demographically, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a Spurs supporter, <laughs> but I'm probably a Chelsea guy. Who's your team, Natasha? I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan. Ah, good girl. <laughs> and do you think that Wenger would ever do this? I, I, Wenger's well known for trying to keep issues in house. He's, look he, how well he that's doesn't worked even, out for him. <laughs> he doesn't abuse his players in public, so it's very unlikely he would abuse his staff in public. Maybe and if he did, Arsenal would be doing a bit better. Oh, he does, see, he literally knows nothing about I football, know. Natasha. It's been one game. Well, let's not even talk to him about the European League, should we? <laughs> <laughs> we must leave it there. Thanks very much indeed to both of you for joining Thanks us here much. on Thank Sky News this afternoon. Thank you. Just a reminder, of course, that Tottenham Hotspur did not qualify for Europe.